welcome back. Today we got another eBay delivery. That's actually new stuff, so it should work. Uh, let's look what's in it. Here we have it. Another set of Hong Young inverters. And it's a good it's a good one with a pot. We're gonna dismantle one this time because I wanna see if the braking circuitry is actually built in or not. Um, I bought two more because I have two more projects where I need those and uh, so let let me take that out and uh, we'll take the cover off and have a look so here we have it <coughs> it's the same as last time uh, <coughs> they do two versions um, this is a 400 volt version or 380 it says it here but it's a 400 volt they do two versions uh, 230 and 400 volts uh, they also do different versions with braking or not you can take the panel off, but you need to pull that uh, glue stuff away because it's somehow glued to it, so it doesn't come out. And then you take just that one out. And then you should be able to take the got a few screws here. Sorry, my dickhead might be in the way. Just want to get these screws out. All I want to see is has it breaking or not. It doesn't say it on the label. That's the problem. Um, uh, this is actually a proper Hang Yang inverter, it's not the cheapo copy we recently had. Uh, I still owe you guys a video about that. Uh, I'll do it at some point. It's got a QC sticker on it, we're gonna avoid the war warranty uh, now. I don't care. And uh, it's looking good. We've got current transducers, which the own roll, the other one doesn't have. Oh no, the, there's no transistor fitted here. There should be a IGPT fitted for the braking and the driver, which is not there. Uh, shame. I was hoping for it, but apparently it doesn't have it. Well, you need to fit the components to make it break. Um, I saw that big relay and I thought it might be a bit breaking, but it's not. That's a bit of a shame. Uh, apparently it's got more capacitors than the, the, the fake one. Apart from that, it looks very similar to the 230 volt version. Uh, maybe capacitor ratings are different. Let's check the capacitor ratings and uh, they're 400 volts, so they're probably in uh, in series. So that makes it that makes it 800 volts with discharge resistors. That's all good. Okay. All right. So we should not exceed 800 volt DC. Uh, with 440 volts, that might be close. Yeah, it's the usual quality. It looks good, good quality, board. Um, I'm not unhappy with it. It's, it's. You get what you pay for. It's Chinese quality, but uh, it's good Chinese quality. Oh, that's all I can say. We're not going to take this one apart because we took apart the other one already. So if you want to see the internals or what's underneath, uh, I checked the components, I checked the transistors and everything. Um, yeah, you can see that there. All I wanted to see if it's got braking or not. Apparently it hasn't. You can order it separately, so it's probably a bit more expensive. But wherever you look, no one, no one specifies it actually. 
so I wonder how much it actually is if you want one with braking because I desperately wanted one with braking for my mystery project uh, but it's not gonna happen uh, you can actually take the panel off and put it elsewhere it's all you need to do is extending that uh, cable here uh, it's a standard two four six eight ten standard ten pin uh, ribbon cable and uh, all you need to do is make you a longer one screen it a bit a little bit eventually because uh, you may see some EMC issues otherwise uh, no good happy so far if you buy young you know, you know what you get and uh, there's nothing wrong with these things apart from very poor filtering there's not, not much filtering uh, in these and uh, that's my only concern as a radio ham you want you don't like interference uh, but this certainly will produce some interference because there is no filtering uh, you can use a mains filter but if you wrap at least a few ferrite cores around that will uh, certainly make it better anyway good good old Wang Yang We'll check the model number. Let's say 04D 043B. Let me see what the other one is. Yeah, the other one is the same. It's a B version as well, so I think it has no braking. But the good thing is you got the pod. Uh, I will try this panel on another one. Uh, on a 230 volt version just to see if the panel works, but I think it does. Um, Anyway, we've got another project coming up where we, where we need those and uh, so that was just a quick video looking inside. Uh, just for just for giggles while we're at when I'm in the mood. This is the fake one. This is not a Hangyang. Uh, it's a Chinese copy of a Chinese inverter. And I promised I'm gonna do a quick look inside. Oh, it comes with some extra fuses, 20 amp fuses. Maybe you need them because it's popping the fuses. I don't know. Anyway, let's take it apart. I, I don't expect anything good in it because as mentioned in the other video, it's probably the worst thing I've seen since a long, long time. First thing is there's no, there's no glue on it. Uh, Design-wise, they are pretty much the same from a how they how they build. It's actually lighter, so I think the heatsink is smaller. You only got three capacitors, uh, but the fun part comes now. There's no breaking resistor connector only one row of terminals so uh, this one you have to take the board out to get the plug down it's certainly different inside Certainly not as easy to take apart as the other one. Uh, some catches here. Yeah, the case is made slightly different. Got some catches here. All right, here we got the drama. We got some fuses. Because this thing has no protection, and as you can see, there is no, there is absolutely no uh, current measurement device. There's no current transducers, uh, nothing. This thing is is just so badly designed. Uh, hardly any capacitors.
825 microfarad. That's not a lot. Uh, well, that's what we have. Transistors look smaller. A lot of compound here. All they have is a thermal protection on the heatsink. The heatsink is actually very small. This is supposed to be a 4 kilowatt version as well. Um, and that's what we can see. If you go back to the beginning of the video, you can see a bunch of uh, bunch of current transducers here. And what they do is actually measuring the current to the motor. So uh, the inverter knows what your current is and what your motor is doing. This thing doesn't know it. And that's probably the reason why you can't select the display function which shows you the motor current. <laughs> because it doesn't matter. It. All it does is basically just creating a three-phase power with a uh, whatever the inverter can do and that's the reason why I put hard fuses in because that's probably the current limit of the inverter I don't know what the limit is I say it somewhere. Yeah, 18 amps input 27 amps output that's what it can do um, I think it's even if you don't know anything about electronics the, you can see the part count is much less uh, just me or is there already some discoloration when I had it running? Uh, I'm not impressed. I wasn't before and I, I, I mean less. This is not changing my opinion since I looked inside. It, I still think it's a piece of junk. Do not buy it. It's just crap. Uh, let's put it back together and we'll put it to use for something minor. is not so critical. Alright, that was that one. Uh, again, difference in appearance is the color is a bit lighter and the display or the panel has a, a lighter gray shade. That's about it. And uh, apparently functional there are quite a few differences. Uh, this thing is just not fit for the job. If it would be half the price, okay. I could say yes. Uh, for, for a simple job where you don't need much, <coughs> just spinning a motor probably not even permanently, just temporary for testing or so, it's okay. But um, this thing has very little protection, neither for itself nor for the motor. Um, if you run a motor which is rated 4 kilowatt, it's okay, probably okay, but what you normally do, you oversize inverters always a little bit. That gives you a bit more overload capacity, because electric motors can do up to 150% for a certain amount of time, any motor can do that. Um, as long as you watch the temperature of the motor, it's fine. Uh, providing your cooling is good, it shouldn't harm the motor. That's what you do in industrial applications all the time. They, they specify a defined overload rating. And uh, you can set a time and things like that in an inverter normally. Well, at least in the commercial and in, in the industrial ones, you can set what the overload rating is and how long it's going to be before it has to go back to normal uh, or flag a fault or whatever. Um, again, this worries me. Maybe they need them very often. Um, so that's the difference between the two. Uh, I keep it for. I don't know for what, <laughs> because I paid for it. Uh, but uh, yeah, this one, that's the real thing. And uh, it's the same as on the Mitchell project. It has the dial, which is handy for some applications. Uh, otherwise you control it externally anyway. That was a short video about the uh, Yang Yang uh, 400 volt inverter with the 
knob on it and if it has braking or not. It's not a comprehensive video about the invert itself. It was just a comparison between the two. And also if you want to see the 230 volt version, go back to my um, inverter video where I dismantled the completely dismantled the 230 volt version of this. It, that's about it. Um, we'll see this in action on the mystery project because I'm running exactly the same on that. Uh, and why I'm using a 400 volt version is explained there as well. Anyway, that's about it from this one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time. Mm -hmm.